All right, this video is on margin of error and also constructing a confidence interval. Now, margin of error you've probably seen if you've read a newspaper or an article on Yahoo um, lately. Sometimes when you read um, things on polls about presidents, they'll say, oh, we are 95% confident that um, in this election, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't know, let's say 45 to 55% of people will re-elect Obama. Now what happens is they're, they're picking a min and a max of what they think um, the percent would be that would re-elect Obama or vote for him. And so margins of error come in when you say, well, if you're giving this range 45 to 55, you know, right in the middle of that would be the number 50. So margin of error comes in to go from 50 to 55 and 50 to 45. The margin of error for this sample would be 5%. So I'm gonna kinda go through a couple steps with you. The first thing that you really are doing when you are calculating a confidence interval um, would be one of two things. The first thing that you really have is um, what you're gonna calculate with your data. You need some sort of estimate plus and minus your margin of error. Now, um, different stats books write this different ways, but typically what you might see is something like an X bar, meaning an average from a sample, and then plus or minus, sometimes they abbreviated MOE for margin of error. Um, if you actually look up this formula, it would look like this. Take your average plus and minus some amount, and this margin of error uses a critical value called a Z star on the standard normal curve times a standard error, where you take the standard deviation of the population and then you divide that by the square root of your sample size. If, for example, you were going to use percents instead of averages, like we did up here, then this would be called take your sample percent from your survey or experiment and then you're going to use a margin of error. It looks really similar so you take your critical value times some kind of standard error but in this case it's a square root of that same p-value that you had before and then 1 minus that value all over n. And so that would be your formula for calculating those out. Now I know that looks a little bit intense, but it's not super hard. It goes hand in hand with your normal curves. Um, now, how to get these values. Now this should come from the example that you're looking at. Usually they state these in the problem that you're reading. Um, you should always know sample size. You know, how many people did you survey? That should be in the problem as well as standard deviation and then you could usually figure these out. But the critical value is one that you actually have to look up. And that comes in hand with your confidence level. So confidence level will actually determine what critical value you will use. I hope you remember this in your textbook. But on the standard normal curve, the average is right in the center. And then if you remember this 68, 95, 99.7 rule, this can kind of help you figure these out. So this would be one standard deviation away. This would be two. This would be three. This would be down one, so negative one, negative two, negative three. In this case, I hope you remember this, 68% of the data is one deviation away. So if I were using a 68% confidence level, this value would be equal to 1. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know that? Well, I can show you on your curve. So from the middle, I can use my calculator to figure out what this number and this number will be. This will be called a Z star, and this should be that same value, but a negative. So when you use your calculator, you can find out what this critical value would be and the function you would use is called inverse norm. So I would hit second and this vars key, it's right next to clear, 
and you should see a screen come up where they give a bunch of different distributions. The one that I'm going to pick is number three, inverse norm. Inverse norm is a function where you would type in three things. Number one, a percent to the left of your location, and then comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. So in this picture here, I have to do a little bit of thinking. At this point on my graph, this value, I need to know all the percent to the left. So I have 68 in here, but out of my curve of 100%, how much of the curve is not even covered? So what would be in these two sections on the side? Well, that would be 32%. Now, that 32% is going to get split up equally on both sides. So I need to split that in half. 16% would go here, and 16 would go here. So at my location, what total is the percent that's on the left? In that case, it would be 84%, or 16 plus 68. So when I use my calculator function, I'm going to type in the percent to the left, 0.84, comma, on a standard normal curve, the mean is 0, and the standard deviations go by 1. And that's always true, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. So my critical value will be 0.99. Well, didn't we think originally that it would be 1? Isn't 0.99 awfully close to 1? Yeah, it is. It's kind of like, oh, go to the dollar store and they say, here's something for 99 cents. You know, really, you're paying a dollar. You need to get a little bit back, you know, one penny. But that's so close that that's why we use that 68.95.99.7 rule. 68%, this is one deviation away. So your Z star, you're going to fill in a one here or here. 95%. Two deviations away, and 99.7% of the data ends up being three. It's pretty cool.